Hey, it's John again at wiredata.net, and I wanted to uh, continue to talk about how you can use ExtraHop's wire data for your InfoSec um, projects and, and as an information security tool. So what I want to talk about today is the HTTP request trigger. And let's just take a look at that. So what ExtraHop can do is it can actually send your HTTP request and HTTP responses to a big data backend like Splunk or a syslog server when that can allow you to harvest that data and actually look at it to uh, see if anything's you know if there are certain metrics for performance but you can also look at it to see if you have anything going on like cross-site scripting or SQL injection or or in the, what we're going to cover today session hijacking so what you're looking at is basically a quick script to grab the cookie and then here we start here's where we actually syslog the data and what I'm logging is the extra hop event as HTTP underscore rec I'm grabbing the client IP the server IP the server port the server DNS name the URI stem the query the origin and then I'm grabbing the header this is where I'm able to grab the header which is the cookie ID and that's what we're going to talk about today in addition to the request size and the user agent so basically I'm taking this data as it comes across the wire in real time and I'm sending it to my big data platform in this case Splunk so here what I'm running in Splunk is a quick regular expression not that difficult I will put this on the downloads and trigger section of wiredata.net so you can grab this query but basically what I'm doing is I'm grabbing my HTTP requests I'm looking for a particular web server IP this is the one I'm gonna hijack the session from here's my regular expression where I'm grabbing from that cookie ID I'm gonna grab the PHP session ID that I intend to hijack and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count the number of time objects by client IP and by HTTP session ID and as you look this is actually running in real time in a five minute window so let me go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and log in and when I log in I'm gonna steal the session ID from this from this log on so so I've logged in now I'm gonna come over to Wireshark here and I'm gonna steal this cookie so I've stole that cookie now I'm gonna to go to my hackers machine where I've got a few uh, penetration testing tools and I'm gonna paste this cookie in here okay the next thing I need is the URL so I'm gonna steal this as well so I'm gonna paste the URL in here and then I'm going to hit first I'll copy my cookie that I just stole and this is where I'll hijack the session I'm using a product called Grease Monkey I have now injected the cookie and the session and without logging in I've hijacked that session so let's wait we may have to wait about 30 seconds but let but let's see what Splunk has for us so here we see my initial connection uh, I have the IP address my session ID that was assigned and if I just go ahead and refresh this you see something interesting here something that you should never see what you're looking at is two different IPs using the same session ID you should never see this if you ever see anything like this you should immediately alert your infosec team and let them know because this is an instance of session hijacking right here and that's what I did now if you look at this this entire this entire discovery took less than 30 seconds I hijacked the session and within maybe maybe a little over 30 seconds but definitely under a minute you could see that you had a problem you had the same cookie ID or the same PHP session ID owned by two different systems that's definitely something 
that's problematic and definitely something that needs to be looked into. So this is just one other way how how grabbing the wire data with extra hop, piping it to a big data platform and then interrogating that data positions you to be able to respond to things like session hijacking very quickly. Anyway, I just wanted to cover that really quick. I thought it was really neat. Um, I'm sure that there's a way to get that that HTML injection as well in ExtraHop, and that's what I'm working on trying to figure out is how to show that and show that the actual URI stem had changed as a result of the script being injected. Another thing you could probably do also is if you wanted to look at a, a long-term amount of data, you could do something like stats and then do a distinct count So what I'm saying here is I want to see the total number of unique IP addresses for each session ID. And there should only be one except in instances where there's been some session hijacking. And I've been playing with this for a little bit today, so you might see a little bit, um, a couple of them with more than one. Let me just take a look here. And there's something wrong here with this query. Let's take a look. Oh, yep, typo. Okay, so here you see a couple of PHP session IDs that had more than one unique IP address. You should never see that. And with Splunk and the extra hop real-time wire data, you can set up like a, a um, like something like this with a bar. What you know is that you should only see one, right? So if you had a like a couple thousand of these or you wanted to build an alert you would want to alert when a unique PHP ID had more than one unique client IP address so I just wanted to cover this real quick it's not the longest video but um, it was too long to bolt on to the end of some of the other videos so uh, I think it's a really great feature I think it's really uh, great that you can grab session IDs right off the wire and be able to report on them in the event somebody's session gets hijacked within 30 seconds thanks a lot for watching and um, I have a lot more videos to come and I'll talk to you later